broadcast Hall of Fame member and one of the most recognizable faces in sports television in the Ozarks. That should help him a lot on the radio. I'm here! Back where he belongs, hosting the sports reporters. Ned Reynolds on your total sports station. 96.9, 99.9, and AM 1060 ESPN. The Jock. Bid you good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Sports Reporters. Delighted to have you with us on an absolutely beautiful November, 2nd of November, first Monday in November, morning here in the Ozarks. Ned Reynolds joined today by... Lyndall Scranton. Mr. Scranton, if you will, do the honors. Well, Al Boski pitched 13 seasons in the big leagues for three teams. Best known for his time in St. Louis, where he led the National League with 22 saves in 1975 to go along with a 13-3 record. He's a long-time commentator for Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest and a Missouri Sports Hall of Famer, class class of 2003. It's the Mad Hungarian joining us, Al Roboski. Al, thanks for your time. Well, you're welcome. It's, uh, like you said, a beautiful day. Just get this election and this uh, virus over with and we'll be perfect. Now, we were uh, debating this uh, earlier, well, last week and uh, earlier today about uh, Wainwright and Yadier uh, being on the free agent list. The general consensus was that uh, the Cardinals would just go to them with a different, uh, different plan since they are free agents and renegotiate. Is that a fair supposition, or are these guys being courted by other, other teams? Well, I think they're going to be courted, but I, but I don't think that, uh, you know, uh, you know, Wainwright, the last two years, has, has had a uh, team-friendly contract, you know, low base with incentives. Uh, two years ago, he, he reached all those incentives. You know, I think it was a $2 million uh, base, and, and then with the chance to make, uh, you know, 8 to $10 million more, and he reached all those incentives. This year, you know, he was probably our most consistent pitcher, but yet, uh, you know, struggled a little bit at the end. Uh, but who didn't? And, um, you know, the base was a little bit higher. Now, I talked to Billy DeWitt, the uh, you know, president of baseball operations, two years ago, and I said I was a little surprised that there was no end date to Yachty's contract. Um, you know, I think it, people were assuming, okay, when the contract is up, he would, he would retire and be, uh, you know, cardinal for life. But, um, you know, now he says he wants to play two more years. Um, I do not. I mean, Billy at that time said, well, if he accepts a contract like Wainwright, I think we can make this happen. But I don't see Yachty discounting his, his uh, salary at all. Um, now, it's going to be question mark. Sure, he can help you know, every major league team. Um, but with what the losses in the industry, you know, is anybody going to go out there and match his $20 million say, salary of, of a year ago? Uh, I don't think so. Um, and as I said, you know, he you know, he's can help any ball club. He's become a much better offensive player. Defensive skills have decreased somewhat, but still, you know, he's elite. Um, but you know, I think Wainwright it could be worked out. Um, but with Yachty, I think he's gonna try and uh, you know, be very um, very very stiff in the fact that he he's looking for a raise more so than he's looking for uh, a cut and pay. What do you think the reaction of Cardinals Nation would be if, if he does go elsewhere? Well, that's that's uh, another question. I, I just think that, you know, uh, the DeWitt family, uh, Bill DeWitt, you know, has been outstanding. You know, he paid all of his employees, paid the minor league guys. It wasn't until September when there were some furloughs. Um, but for the most part, he's kept the payroll out there with, you know, with no revenues coming in. And um, you know, have to commend him for that. But um, you know, I know he wants Yachty to retire as a Cardinal and only be a Cardinal. Um, but there's going to have to be some give and take from Yachty. I know uh, Benji Molina uh, talked the other day that Yachty's not looking for any cuts in pay. So uh, it could be difficult. But you know, he also has an opportunity to go out and find out what his value is on the open market. Um, as I said, though, it's, it's not going to be fair to these free agents because uh, of all the losses in the industry. 
I think most people are are looking at cutting salary, uh, you know, and maybe at best you're you're adding a, a very tiny share or keeping your salary where it is. You, you know, you were a, a young player when when you came up. Bob was very well established, and as was Lou Brock. And those guys passed recently. Uh, bad times indeed for Cardinals Nation. What were, what were they like as teammates for a young player? Well, you know, I came up at 20 years of age, and uh, you know, it's it's, it's kind of uh, it may sound funny, but you know, in my mind, you know, I was I idolized Bob Gibson. Uh, he was the biggest influence on my pitching career, and uh, I didn't have the physical ability he had, but you know, I tried to take some of the mental things and and uh, tried to you know get into intimidation and just created the mad Hungarian, uh, you know. To, to intimidate people. And back then, pitchers could intimidate hitters. You know, today, hitters intimidate pitchers. And then Lou Brock was probably the biggest influence on me um, off the field. Uh, was a great teammate to me and, you know, had a lot of fun with him, doing different things and stuff. And we had a relationship that, you know, if we didn't see each other, you know, when I went to the American League and he's still in the National League with the Cardinals, you know, I didn't see him for a couple years. But, you know, we could just pick up our, our friendship you know, right where we left off, and it was just like a, we talked to, to each other uh, the next day. So, boy, it's, it's been a tough year for baseball when you think of some of the greats, you know, you know, K-Line and, and Seaver, Joe Morgan, of course, Lou and Gibby. Um, it just, you know, it just really uh, hit hard. And then, of course, we really couldn't honor them the way we wanted to because of the COVID-19. Yeah. So. You know, I'm sure I'm sure the the ball club will do something in their honor next year. But uh, you know, it's it's just been such a bad bad year for so many people all around. Al, you have been a gentleman for taking time to visit with us. Many 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 thanks, and hopefully we can do this again in the future. Well, of course we can. You know, we I met you. Uh, you know, I don't know how old you tell your people are, but I think it was about fifty years ago. Uh, that was 50 years uh, ago, you know, more. <laughs> yeah. So it's you know, and and uh, you know, I know the Cardinals are so happy to have the Springfield affiliate, uh, and you know, I guess you know, and you, with the contraction of a lot of minor league teams, uh, Springfield does not have to worry about that. They run a great program down there, and and I, I think the the way these kids are introduced to the fan base there in in Springfield, it, it just prepares them to come up from St. Louis and and know we got the best fans in baseball. That is beautiful and very well said. Al Robowski, many, many, many thanks and much good luck, man. Thank you, Al. Yeah, and you guys all stay safe. It's stay safe, you know? Absolutely. Just wash your hands and, and use a little common <laughs> sense. Wear the mask. You're right. Wear the mask. Busy yeah. with his... Let's go to uh, Bill. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing this morning? Hey, guys. You doing all right? Good. Good. Great, Thank Bill. you. Hey, guys. Lando, good to hear you. Uh, great interview with, with uh, Al Roboski. You know, I was just thinking, and I'm not telling you anything you guys don't know, but the, the way the game has changed is just unreal because back in the 70s and 80s, you know, these clo- the closers on these teams would come into the games and uh, – sixth or seventh inning and finish the games out. And, you know, George Brett's big home run in the 1980 playoffs against the Yankees was in the seventh inning, and Gossage was already in the game. And, and Quisenberry used to come in and pitch three, four innings to get a save. And so, you know, the, the game was changing a little bit at that time. You still had starters that would complete games. Nowadays, you don't have any starters that complete games. But, um, the way the bullpens have changed. I mean, now you you've got World Series games where the starting pitcher goes two innings, and then they bring somebody else in. I mean, it's just <laughs> unreal how it has changed. And I don't know if that's because they're throwing harder uh, as a whole in the big leagues now, and it's rougher on the arms. I don't know the reasoning. I know the hundred the hundred pitch limit just came out of nowhere. A lot of people say Tony La Russa really is the one that started the hundred pitch. Uh, guideline as far as getting a pitcher out of the game. I mean, who, why is 100 pitches the magical number? Back in the day, I mean, Bob Gibson would throw 150 and it wouldn't be no big deal. You know what I mean? 
know fully well a game when uh, Juan Marshall and I think it was Don Drysdale, yeah. if I remember correctly, threw six innings and the starting pitchers were still there and the very famous Harvey Haddix 12 inning no hitter Lou Burnett yeah. and Harvey Haddix were still in there at the end in the 13th inning Hey, yeah, time, times have changed, conditioning has changed but more than anything else in my opinion it's the philosophical approach and the hard pitching the, the uh, velocity does have a lot to do with that because the human being can't, can't throw that hard forever And we do have a very special guest. If you will, do the honors for us. Yes, sir. Uh, we started our tour of, uh, I guess you'd say, former news leader sports staffers <laughs> last week with Matt Shook. We uh, continue it today with a sports reporter for the Lincoln Journal Star. He covers Nebraska Cornhuskers athletics, among other things. We welcome Chris Basnet to the sports reporters. Chris, thanks for coming on the show. How are you? Well, no, I'm, I'm great. What an honor for me to, to join you and, and Ned on the radio today. What a great way to start my week. That is so very nice of you to say, Chris. It's very, are you uh, are you sunshiny and warm up in uh, Lincoln today? Oh uh, yeah, the sun the sun is out. There's not a cloud in the sky. Uh, the football team has played one game in the last four or five months. So yeah, so th- things are things are going great here in Lincoln, Nebraska. First, Chris, kind of recap for the listeners: when you worked here in Springfield, and and what were some of your uh, maybe favorite teams or people that you covered while you were here? Well, I was in Springfield uh, 2010 to 2014. Uh, worked for the news leader from about uh, 2011 on and, until my wife and I moved back to Nebraska in 2014. Um, was lucky to, to cover have have some of the best times of my career covering teams down there. Of course, uh, the the Drury Men's Basketball National Title in 2013 was able to cover that. Um, of course, the Springfield Cardinals games, and, and Ned knows all about the the twenty inning game they played. I was I was able to to cover that. Uh, um, some great great <laughs> high school teams, uh, football, basketball, and that mix of basketball boys is a team that always sticks out in my mind. They went to a state title game while I was down there. Uh, the Drury women, Missouri State women's basketball covered a covered a coaching change there when when Kelly Harper came in. So yeah, just uh, just uh, a lot of a lot of great teams and a, and a lot of great memories from my time in Springfield. Of course, being a Nebraska native, uh, what was it like, or what has it been like to return back home and be a part of covering the teams that you grew up watching? Yeah, it's 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 been it's been interesting. You know, it's it's, it's kind of like things have come full circle. You know, I was I was born during a Nebraska football game in, in 1979, and my dad always tells a story story that it was seven nothing when my mom went into labor, and it was 49 nothing Nebraska when when I was born. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, and now to to be able to to cover that team, uh, to cover the the men's basketball team as, as closely as I do, and, and the baseball team, which was having you know. a, a going to college world series and, and things like that when I was just out of college and getting started in my career, it's been, it's been pretty neat. You know, I, I think most people would tell you if, if you grow up uh, in Nebraska, if you're born in Nebraska, you, you, you kind of root for the Huskers and you don't really have a choice. You know, my, my wife was asking me what my first Halloween costume was the other day. And I'm pretty sure I was, uh, I was Turner Gill, the old Nebraska quarterback from, from the early 1980s. So yeah, it, it's just been neat to, to now be a part of that and, and to be, you know, a very small piece of, of something that's so important to so many people. Talk about sports writing in this year of COVID and what it's like to try to cover a team. Uh, obviously access is not, what it once was you can't just show up for press conferences uh how do you how do you cover a team these days is everything by zoom or how do they how are they doing it in uh, at nebraska yeah it's it's different that's for sure it's it's been pretty much all by zoom calls um fred hoiberg the basketball coach here likes to joke that that all he knew of zoom was that that was one of his play calls you know that was a dribble handoff in fred hoiberg's playbook was zoom so he, so he's had to get used to it too but yeah you know it's uh Everything's by Zoom or by phone call. You know, after Nebraska played Ohio State in football a couple weeks ago, it was it was interesting because Scott Frost just you know kind of sat down behind a microphone and we all watched him through our through our computer screens. You know, and in Nebraska, you come to a post game press conference and there's you know 50, 75 people in, in Scott Frost post game press conference and there's player there's you know media crowding around players in a hallway near the stadium and. Yeah, it's it's very different. You know, you, you try to make do. You know, we obviously went a couple months without even having anything to cover uh, when everything was shut down. I was in um, I was in uh, Indianapolis uh, on March 12th. Uh, Nebraska played one of the last uh, 
men's college basketball games of the season. They played Indiana in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. And we got word in the second half that the NBA had shut down its season. Of course, Fred Hoiberg uh, was shown on TV sick that game, was asked to, to leave the game with about four minutes left, you, you know, and – so that was that's probably been one of the more unique things I've had to cover, and, and that was the last thing I covered or covered for a few months until things kind of got going again. So yeah, it's it's been interesting. It's been different. We've all kind of had to adjust, but you just kind of have to have to make do with, with what you have. Chris Basnett from the Lincoln Journal Star. Chris, hopefully we can do this again during basketball season, but we uh, sure do appreciate you coming on on your old uh, old hometown at least for a while. Your this was your hometown. Yeah, always, always happy and thankful to talk to the, the folks in Springfield, and I really appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. All right, and that's going to wrap it up. Linda, we've had a pretty doggone good show today, I think. It's been a really good show. Thanks to Chris Bassnett and the Mad Hungarian, Al Roboski. And the Mad Hungarian was absolutely sensational. In fact, our other, other pizza friend, I'm sure, knows the Mad Hungarian very well. All righty, gang, that's going to wrap it up for the Monday edition. Many, many thanks for uh, Lyndall Scranton. I'm Ned Reynolds. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Hope you have a terrific day, and we will see you tomorrow, Election Day, right here on The Sports Reporter.